Ladies and gentlemen, I am Israel. The game is World of Warships. Welcome to Trident in Domination Mode. And this was basically one of those games where I pulled out the Atlanta because I'd had two bad games and the matchmaking decided to smile on me. To a large extent, that's why we're going to get the results we do today. The other reason we're going to get the results we do today is because there are two carriers aside, one Hiryu, one Independence on each team. And what follows? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow, wow. You would think after so many videos of why you have to be mad, more than one montage myself, people would have learned not to take planes near a hostile Atlanta. Nope, they haven't learned. <laughs> oh dear. That said, the game starts out pretty standard. It is trying its domination, so we've got the three cat points, and rather than going for a cat point immediately, I'm just going to toggle my way down here, roughly E4, E5, hide behind this island. I'm in a good position there to either provide close range support into A or B, and if the enemy do try to use any air cover over these control points, I'm in a very good position to essentially lock those down, prevent any enemy aircraft, not necessarily flying into the cap circle, but certainly flying back out of it. Actually pull out my gun sight, Alcobatonic26 pulls ahead of me in his Kiev. Bear in mind him, he's going to have a pretty decent game as well. But for the most part, the deployment is shaking out how we'd expect. The carriers have smartly turned tail and are legging it to the back line. That's actually going to save them in a few minutes' time. And here comes the first enemy air wave. Now, I don't initially see them. I'm watching point A and B. You can see my vision cone there. But the enemy flies straight into my outer flak zone. I listen to my guns and then I wake up. Lock the guns over to manual, plug in defensive fire, and the carnage begins. First torpedo bomb wave goes down pretty much immediately, second wave disappears. Then I started on the fighters, because that's what was in range, and then I spot the second wave of bombers coming in to my close flak zone. So lock up the torpedo bombers, because they're the more immediate threat. One, two, three, four... Five and six. I was slightly asleep, so the dive bombers actually got through, but trust me on this, they are not going to get back out. Boomski. That was 23 aircraft in the space of approximately, what, 25 seconds? And a little bit of salt from the Hiryu, who is apparently a little bit sore that his entire strike wing just got deleted. What can I say? You fly within range of an Atlanta, you expect to lose your planes. Of course, Atlanta's other job is bullying underage boats. So, like the radar, there's a Mutsuki that's in the smoke. Launch one. Doesn't have incoming fire look because he didn't light his engine. First volley takes out his engine. Second volley rips most of it to shreds. And then the Kiev lights him up and finishes him off just before the third broadside does him in. Defensive fires on cooldown, and I've made myself a little unpopular with the battles, so rather than scoot out in front of them, I slam into reverse. And I'm not sure what happened to that torpedo bomber squadron, but, well, eight two of them before they disappeared. No aircraft in range at the moment. Now, the... Little bit of a problem here. I could try to scoot across point B to get up to the rest of the fleet and try to intercept their next airstrike because, well, the enemy is not going to be so dumb as to send more planes over here, are they? You would think. The problem is, of course, that in order to get to the rest of the fleet round by C, I have got to cross B in the open, broadside to, let me see, that's a Dunkirk, a Scharnhorst, a Neisnau, a Nuremberg, an Ognivoy, and a Milko, who probably both try their luck as well. Yeah, I'm not going to make it across there in a the month of Sundays. So those torpedo bombers over in E9 are going to get through unmolested. And, well, 34 air kills, four minutes into the game. I'm just going to have to turn myself around and grab A instead. Pity, really. I was hoping this was going to be the game that let me break a hundred air kills, but sadly it's not to be. I'll drop you that spoiler right now. However, with most of the enemy fleet focused in A and two of their destroyers dead... Oh, looky! Ooh, he, he's sending dive bombers after me. 
As I hear you, he really does want me dead, doesn't he? That's a wave of dive bombers coming in solo, unescorted. I don't even need defensive fire for this. Thank you very much. That is, well, it will be another five kills. There we go. And then the American dive bombers turn up as well. Promptly lose two, three, four. They were trying to drop on our destroyers, but it really doesn't matter. They're down four and we catch sight of the hero legging it away from his escorts going, it has to be noted, completely the wrong way. Maybe he was trying to do a sneaky cap of A himself, I'm honestly not sure, but he's going to regret that decision in a few minutes' time. Pretty much out of range. I mean, I'll try a parting shot on this Nuremberg. He's actually backing up, so put a broadside out, get detected for it, but no nope, main carnage target is going to be this Hiryu. So he's nice, broadside on, start putting the rounds out. Problem with the 5 inch guns, of course, is this horrendously floaty ballistics model they get. That said, it doesn't stop putting 12 rounds and 7,000 damage straight into the hero, and that's another 4,500. Keep dropping the salvos. A couple of rounds actually shattered, even with inertia fusing on the high explosive. At least I think I've got that on this setup in Atlanta. But not to worry, get a fire on him. Of course, that's not the crippler it used to be. And he's now really got an option. He's got to send bombers after us, because if he doesn't, he's toast. And his flight groups will be useless anyway. Defensive fire plugs back in and immediately wrecks the first squadron of torpedo bombers before... Well, those torp bombers are out of range. So for the moment, Atlanta's hunger must go unsated. But he launches another wave of dive bombs again. Not ideal, because he's launching them right into my flak zone, so they're immediately under fire, and they don't even get a hundred yards from their carrier before they are unceremoniously deleted. Okay, maybe they get a kilometre or two from the carrier. Maybe a mile. Don't really care. I mean, that's one dive bomber. I'm more interested in knocking out his torpedo bombers. There they go. And then focused on that last dive bomber to get rid of him. So we are now at 59 air kills and rapidly coming up on the record. We're just as rapidly about to clear the headland and lock onto this hero. He gets his last squadron of torp bombers into the air. Out goes the high X. 10 rounds in. Again, two shatters, which is a surprise. I'm pretty sure I've got inertia fusing on this build. So that gives you an idea that it's, it's not quite the... Uh, be all and end all that you expect. Unfortunately, the independence burns him down before that last broadside connects. So all that's left is just to have me some fun and hoover up some free kills from the now somewhat controlless aircraft, particularly knocking down those last fighter squadrons before they can molest our own dive bombers. Torpedo bombers trying to come in. Not sure they actually got launch orders before the heroes sank. Doesn't really matter anymore, they're dead. And that is 72 aircraft in 8 minutes. Well, 7 and 3 quarter minutes. And 47,000 damage, but no kills, which is a little bit frustrating. As Mellinger goes, that's not nice, but more salt from the carrier driver. And yeah, come on, need more planes. Feed me, come on, feed the beast. Spoiler, they... Don't feed the beast. The independents had more sense than the hero. Or maybe he just ran out of planes. I'm honestly not sure. However, I'm out of the action for a little bit. So we transfer our attention over to the other side. Now, there's a limit to what I can see because of my vision cone. But if we toddle over to the main section of the action, we have got B and C where things are less smooth than we would have liked. Our carriers are safely on the back line, they're both intact. They've even got an escorting cruiser over there, which is something of a surprise. Even more of a surprise is that the Nagato is, of course, on the second line as well, providing a bit of fire support, but Flanker Luke is, much to his dismay, facing the Dunkirk. Not too bad, but there's a nice now over there as well. Meanwhile, our cruiser, who I can't actually see because, as I said, he's out of my vision cone, is... well, there is actually a destroyer coming up behind the carrier squ 
squadron, so he might have been better off trying to reposition around behind while I'm desperately trying to toddle along at my stately 32 knots to get back into the action, having dealt with their carriers. The real problem, of course, is over here. Executor in his nice now, Sequax in his Dunkirk. And that Shiratsu, which has just unleashed nightmare mode on our Nagato. The Nagato started his engines, but, well, it's going to be luck and RNG that saves him. He eats one, he is going to eat two. Maybe he'll survive. Nope, he eats a third and is well and truly poised out of existence. The first ship claims another victim. Yes, I'm mixing my memes here. I don't care. Torpedo bombers go in on the Shan Horse of Manticore HB. It should be enough. We have one, two, three. Nope, just the one impact. It's almost enough. A second one would have got him, but he managed to turn in and dodge the worst of it. The real problem, however, is this nice now who's just turned into B. He puts rounds out. I think he is targeting our battleship over there. Can't actually see who it was because, again, limited vision curves. But I've just been picked up by enemy aircraft. And, well, we all know that nice now's love feasting on cruisers. I start putting rounds in, lobbing them over the hill, just taking advantage of the floaty ballistics. And while I'm at it try and shove a broadside into the Shratsu as well, because, hey, target of opportunity. Shratsu goes into the smoke, puts something down approximately into her last known location, but now I have absolutely got to focus on this nice now. I'm trying really to interrupt the capture on B as more than anything, but I'm crippled by the fact that I can't bring all my guns to bear. That nice now is using 15-inch guns. He's got a 25-second fire cycle, give or take. And armor on an Atlanta? You must be kidding me. So what I can do is I can turn to an extent, try to bring my port wing type to bear. So I've got four turrets on him, trying to get the occasional round from the bow guns as well. So I've got seven turrets firing. Really need a fire here, just ripple firing, trying to get a solution. But every so often I have got to turn back in, minimize the target, and desperately at least try to minimize the damage coming in from executors guns. I'm also taking the old pod shot at that independence because hey why not. Turn back again onto nice now. Complicated things. I've got the island in the way. Nice now is going to be lining up for another shot. Get those guns on. Here comes another broadside from the 15s. I've overturned a one two not a citadel. I'm still here but those were a couple of big hits anyway. I lost a good quarter of my rim Maining health took a 6,000 hit and I'm down to 15k. I can't take much more like that, but neither can Executor. He is down to 11,000 health and I have got the reload. There go his forward turrets. Turn, 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 turn. Try to beat his solution. There we go. Managed to evade the worst of it. Landing 3,000 aside, I get a long string of misses here where I completely get my range estimates wrong. See, they're dropping short. That floaty 5-inch is really sensitive to any kind of error in your elevation. So if you miss range, there you go, managed to correct it that time. He's also being fired on by the Kiev. Batonic has just burned down the Independence, and then he burns the Nice now to grab a double strike and his Kraken unleashed. And that's basically it. That is how you can do 85,000 damage and get no kills whatsoever and still pull in 3,100 base XP. There is a little after note here, which is the Shiratsu. You can watch our chat here. We're actually speculating where he's gone. And in truth, well, we've got the last known position marker here. We know B got captured, so we know the Nice now didn't do it. So chances are, well, as you'll see me say in chat minute, the Shiratsu has turned right, gone into B, capped, and then, well, he can't go south because he'd run into me and trip my detection radius. So he probably squirted north into this gap here. We're calling for air support to just sweep the grid sectors, try and find the destroyer. But, well, 
Shiratsu only has a 3 kilometer detection range from there, and he'll have his flak shut down, so we're not going to blunder into him. Not that that makes a massive amount of difference. Shiratsu only has 25mm guns, they're short range. Chances are, by the time the flak comes into play, he will be visible anyway, but eh, who cares. I say, he probably scuttled North Abbey, put that out in the general channel by mistake. Oops. Forgot to press tab after I asked for more planes. But, well, the carrier takes the hint, starts sending his planes to the north, and in a couple of seconds... Well, it's really just a question whether we find it... Ah, there you are. Out of my visual range again, just creeping in at the 20 kilometer mark. And, um, well... On 7,500 with aircraft spotting him, there's really not a lot that Kerberosa can do to try to salvage this particular mess. Not when he has got multiple dive bombers coming down. He takes one clonking hit from the dive bombers, drops them down to just shy of 5,000 health, and, well, he's got a battleship chasing him, so it's really just a matter of time. And with that many fighters overhead, he can't break contact either. He is out of options. It's that simple. Rounds come down. The first salvo from the battleship misses. Let's go to free camera again, see if we can get over there before the inevitable sinks in. And he is actually going to survive this because what ends the round isn't going to be him getting killed. It's going to be the score running out. We're at 992... 995, he takes another hit from the dive bombers. 998, one last volley of high X comes down. And then it's game over with a thousand points, so he did actually manage to survive. By Atlanta's standards, this is a pretty good game. 85,000 damage off 225 main battery hits. Only managed to start three fires, but that's inertia fused high explosive for you. Of course, that's of little consolation to the 73 downed aircraft. We have, however, got ranked Season 6 coming up, and the big boys and girls are going to be playing at Tier 7, which means that Atlanta and her vicious little sister, the Flint, are in the lineup against Hiryu, Saipan, and Ranger. Carrier drivers, please take note of today's battle. An anti air spec Atlanta represents a 7.2 km radius no fly zone. If you must attempt to violate that, do so with every bomber at your disposal at once. Don't do what the Hiryu did today and send them one group at a time. It probably won't help, truth be told, but there is a slim chance that if they all come at the Atlanta at once, you might get a few of the bombers through. An even better idea, however, is to get your buddies in the heavy cruisers and the battleships to remove the offending boat for you, which clears the way for your planes and the Allied destroyers, to move in and not have to worry about flak or radar. The other thing is actually for wargaming. It's easy to say don't fly within 7.2 kilometers of an Atlanta, but with the current user interface, carrier players don't really have a good range indicator between their planes and an enemy ship. It's all measured from your own ship to the enemy. You know, if you're too close to an Atlanta, of course, your planes start falling out of the sky, but by that point, it's usually far too late. Supposedly, the carrier interface is going to get a rework, and one thing I'd like to see added, even if it's going to make games like this a lot rarer, is an option to display the range to the enemy from either a selected flight group, which admittedly will get messy if you've got multiple groups selected, or from the centre of the camera's viewpoint. Just something to make it easier for carrier drivers to judge range between plane and enemy and stop some of these senseless massacres. Please, Wargaming. Think of the pilots. Also, along with a new personal best for air kills, I have another new record, most salt induced in one game. Not quite sure what to make of that, but, well, until next time, farewell.